All right, hi everybody. This is uh, one of my first few Facebook videos. I'm here with Mike Havens, who's an expert at this. I'm trying to bring Tom into the future generation of Facebook here, so. So Mike brought down uh, for me to look at this Irish Space Figures three pack. And the focus of the talk that Mike and I wanted to have today is just uh, kind of twofold. It's one, uh, no repro. And uh, you know, I know that that's a, a issue of contention right now, so we felt the topic was relevant. Um, we'll talk about that a little more, and the other concept is the buck stops here. So we're going to start with uh, this Irish three-pack right here that uh, is basically uh, a overstock manufactured, uh, uh, <laughs> an overstock manufactured uh, pack from Ireland where they just randomly put three figures on it. Now this pack here can be opened by peeling apart the two layers of cardboard. And you can get inside and you can't, the, the bubble isn't sealed in any other way. Uh, kind of like um, Hungarian carded with a staple or one of those other things that are uh, done in qualified grades because there's not really a way to, to be certain that that's the original seal. We've looked at this. We know that this is a, an original uh, pack in every way in the sense that this is an original package, original bubbles, and the correct European version of the figures. However, some information came about that shows that this pack was sold uh, 15 years ago and it had a different figure here instead of Boba Fett. So now that Mike is aware of that, even though the whole pack is, is real otherwise, because we've been able to match up pictures from back then with pictures from now and compare very specific flaws, and we know that's the case, uh, Michael is demonstrating the concept of the buck stops here. Uh, if he were to pass this on, somebody would get it, somebody would resell it. It's a common problem in the hobby that people do that. And uh, Mike's just not that guy. And he wanted to make it clear to people that he's not going to sell it on after we know. Well, I wanted to bring it down first and make sure somebody like him double checked it out just because, you know, you always want to be sure. Um, it's a really expensive piece. It's something I've hunted for a very long time. This one was incorrectly put together and it is definitely not, uh, not legitimate to what it should have been when it first came out, which is unfortunate. So in order to stop that, uh, if you want to Google what this thing is worth, I'm going to take this exacto knife right here and tom thank you for bringing me down here and making sure this is like i'm like Absolutely. literally shaking because this is like freaking crazy but fake is fake and fake is fake right fake. So, it's fake is fake there's no way to put the genie back in the bottle I and mean, somebody has taken out the original figure and you can't can't replace it so from this point forward now it's an opened pack somebody could could now resell it but no one's going to be confused that that's... it's never ever going to happen again that bubble is ruined I know some of you people will be like, you shouldn't have ruined that, but somebody ruined it when they made a fake. Um, and then it ended up back in the market and it ended up ripping people off. It ended up ripping me off. I went to go sell it. Luckily, some people reached out and said that they noticed a picture that matched up from years ago. I brought it here to Tom. He was nice enough to go through it and take the time and really look into it and make sure what we just did there is the right thing to do. And this will never, ever, ever end up in another collection or rip off another collector again. And that's what you have to do when you get repro, whether it's a $5 blaster or whether it's a really expensive card of figure you've been hunting for years and years and years. You have to make sure it doesn't end up ripping someone else off down the line. Now, I'm going to sure. turn it over to Tom because he has some really cool stuff he brought from home that he's going to go through with us. And uh, check it out. So tell him a little yeah. bit about what's here. But right, anyway, so this gonna, is... Yeah, so this is done. We're going to continue on. that concept of saying that the buck stops yeah. here is very important within the hobby. Because something I see a lot in my position is that a lot of things come in for me to authenticate. And I can't authenticate them for very good reason. And I share that reason with uh, the people who've sent them in. A lot of times those items then go on to be authenticated by other people or companies or something like that. And then the person who's had them graded never, uh, never lets any potential buyer know that there was any potential problem with the item. Eventually that item does come back to me and I look at it again and I, and I say to the person who's having me look at it that I've seen this before and I already said it was bad. And it just doesn't help anybody. So uh, unfortunately, you know, we all are willing to take a gain when you buy something, you sell it for a profit. It's a lot harder to take a loss, but that's just part of being honest within the hobby. So I know that there's a lot of talk right now about repros and, you know, basically uh, whether it's okay to have them or not. And, and I get that, that somebody who's maybe not super seriously collecting, who just wants to have something that looks like their childhood ones, could be okay getting something cheaper, but there's really no reason to make them look exactly like the real thing. The only reason you would do that is to deceive somebody. It's no different than, than something like this. And so right here, for example, 
I've got painted hard copies from the vintage line. You've got painted hard copies here and you have a painted hard copy here, okay? Only this Dengar is real. These other two are completely fake. These other two come from a scam of about 10 years ago where people were scammed out of quite a bit of money. There's really no difference between that and repro weapons. In both cases, you're just trying to make something to deceive the collector. You know, there's other things. We've had the fake Dynacast for years that's going around that's a different tone. We have the fake baggies that have the different ink that come from uh, a unscrupulous dealer in England. You know, and it's just things like this really hurt the hobby. So I'm happy when people do decide that they don't want to pass something on. When you decide it's fake, they want to, to get rid of it. Um, you know, I've got a lot of really great stuff here that's, that's really nice. And, um, you know, it, it takes away from it when there's fake stuff that looks almost as nice. Now, some other things I'll bring up uh, are, are, for example, this that was submitted as a first shot Lando Skiff. Uh, boy, this took quite a bit of research and looking under the microscope before I was able to see little evidence that the brown paint was stripped from these legs. Okay, I mean, something like that clearly done to deceive. People do projects for their own collections all the time, and then eventually those things move into somebody else's collection. They move into someone else's collection and the story gets lost on it. Um, so and if you want to be creative with something like that, you may as well just make something that's a custom that hasn't been made before. Yeah, I have Instead no issue with making something that doesn't copies. exist. Yeah, no, absolutely. Completely. Absolutely. So, um, you know, one of the last things I'll show you is, um, and we'll talk about is about double telescoping figures. <laughs> I'm going to grab these two right here. Basically, just in the last few weeks, for the first time ever, I've seen some double telescoping Darth Vader sabers that have come in that actually have the correct break points and seams. Uh, truly, these are so good that they would fool almost anybody. Uh, clearly, that's terrible for our hobby. It's, it's clearly not good. So if you think somebody's making repros, you think somebody's making fakes, you got to call them out for it. Yeah. Now, I'm not at all advocating for threatening people or, 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 or saying anything that's uh, hostile or, or belligerent towards anybody. I mean, you can always have a discussion about it, but it does need to be called out. It needs to be brought to the surface. You know, for example, right here, we have a authentic DT, Ben Kenobi. So great, a wonderful piece, amazing. But then we have this Ben Kenobi right here, which was sold on Facebook a few years ago. Uh, you know, it popped up in some of the groups that has no uh, inner saber inside the saber, but even this outer saber appears to be a repro. There's no break point on it. You can see evidence that somebody's gone in through the bottom of the blister. And you know, this got a lot of publicity in the community. Somebody's out $30,000 on this, but guess what? The buck did stop here. That client decided not to make it public, but decided he just didn't want to have this item. And he was, you know, he's not gonna pass it on or try to sell it to anyone else. And I think that's the gist of it. I mean, no repro. And, you know, well, you gotta take responsibility. You get, exactly. Because everybody, you know, life is tough and everybody's always going to have something that hits the bank account or it hits you in some way or where you get robbed or ripped off or something like that. And if Absolutely. you go rob the next person in turn, you're not any better than that person that robbed you. you so go. if you see something, say something. Talk to somebody like me, just like I did. I found this one, and then what did I do? I went to Tom Derby, and I talked to Tom, and I said, hey, will you check this out? Will you confirm it? Because I... How many how many years you've been doing this? Eight thousand years? Thirty years. So thirty years. Yeah. <laughs> thirty years. <laughs> and I haven't had the thirty years of looking at Irish three packs, so I'm sure that his eyes and his things that he's gonna pick up are better than mine. But this one was actually Yeah, on, on this one, one on, on, because of the type of item, much like I said, much like a stapled blister. Yeah. Because the type of item, I mean, all you can do on this is be sure that all the parts are real. Right. If you're buying something like that, you, you can't be certain the figures inside are the original ones. But if you found out that they weren't, you do what Mike did and you say, shoot, this has been uh, Or what this altered. guy did, whoever this was. I mean, that's really solid of him. I yeah. mean, stuff like that happens and you have to suck it up sometimes and just deal with the loss and move on. Right. And so I'll leave you with some cool uh, real things. So yeah, here we go. This is pretty neat. This is the uh, original uh, FET artwork from the display, the original photo art. That's super <laughs> neat. I'll leave you with uh, awesome. real hard copies. Like, uh, of course, we have this painted Dengar hard copy. This is actually the original figure that was on the front of the Cloud City box. So that's really, really neat. That's cool. One of my favorite hard copies that there is. We have a Greedo in here. And then even just recently picked up this Vlix proto mold, which is really, really cool. Oh, wow. He's got a different mold on the chest and head comes off. Super, super oh, neat stuff. Cool. But, you know, let's all have fun collecting authentic things. Let's, yeah. uh, 
not not uh, dwell in the realm of repro and don't try to defraud other people. Uh, that's would be the message that we want to pass on. And if you don't have the ability to get something, I mean, shoot, I can't afford 90% of the stuff on this table. But if you don't have the ability to get something, it's okay to get something that fits the bill anyway. If you want some uh, weapons for your action figures, why not buy some Power of the Force 2? The lightsabers look better, they're really, really cheap, and they're not fake. There's no reason to go to these repro people who are making it closer and closer to the real ones. Everybody everybody has a certain lifespan on this earth and none of us is going to live forever and eventually, whether it's through our children, our children's children, our children's children's children, it's going to end up back in the market and it's going to end up hurting somebody. And thank you very much, Tom, for having me down and yeah. doing all this and thanks for always looking at my stuff when I don't know what's going on sure. and having way more knowledge than me. I really appreciate it. <laughs> well, I, I think it's, it's, a, it's a good topic for me to make a quick video on just simply because I think that there's enough disagreement between various people and groups these days, but I think that we can all agree that being honest, <laughs> dealing in authentic merchandise is something that helps the hobby. And I think we can all try to remember that we're all here to have fun and we're yep. all here, you know, hopefully we can, um, hopefully as we move forward, we can do so as more of a united community. Yeah, no, I yeah. love it. Thank you very much for your yeah. time. Thank, Thank you, you everybody for watching and uh, I'll see you soon.